Okay, basically in this video what I want to do is I want to um, kind of give a um, bit of a introduction to this book, which is Jeu de Luz and Fides Quitari, A Thousand Plateaus. Um, it's their Capitalism and Schizophrenia. There's two books in the thing, in this, in the, in the couple. The other one is this one, the uh, um, Anti-Oedipus. Um, so, I guess... Um, I'm in, I guess um, I'm basically introducing you to the the first um, chapter, if you will, which is called the introduction rhizome. Um, I'm gonna explain why this is. It's not really an introduction. I'm mostly gonna be explaining terms uh, and concepts in uh, the in the philosophy of Deleuze and uh, Watari that are very important for both of these. Um, I've, show, I've read parts of this, but I've read most of this, I guess I would say, in parts. Um, but this is very difficult to kind of st stuff to understand. Another, another book, this is just, just by Deleuze, Difference and, and Repetition. So, um, basically, let's start there. Um, let's see what happened on the board here. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't comment below, I'm trying to make it better since I have new. I'm, I'm, I moved back for this for this for the semester, and I have a new place for the for the marker board, so it's not as easy to put my iPad in a place where um, the marker board can be seen. That's where it is. So, um, first of all, this is not your typical book. You can't possibly do one video and understand all these terms. Nonetheless, the philosophy of Deleuze and um, Guattari. You couldn't possibly do that. So, what I'm attempting to do is kind of give a brief um, introduction to all these terms, and to kind of give a brief in, a brief introduction to the, I guess the the uh, anti the uh, anti Oedipus is a little. It's a little different. It has, I would say, maybe a little bit more psychoanalytic thought in it. Uh, this this does have some of that in it, or a, 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 a good amount in it. But um, this has a introduction and a, and a conclusion along with many different sections in the middle. And that's done for laughs. It's done because this is not any ordinary book and you could read any of the plateaus or parts or chapters either each of the 15 plateaus Maybe each of the each of the fifteen parts called the, called the plateau. Um, you can read any one of them in um, in um, in uh, any order, and it really do, it really it really doesn't matter because it's not a regular book that has argument after argument after argument. It's very very different and very difficult to um, understand. So, I guess the, what I what I would recommend for reading Deleuze and Watari and the works just by just by Deleuze as well. To not try to understand everything he's saying, because if you do that, you will have a difficult time. Because the point is not to. This is very similar to Jacques Derrida, because you can't read Deleuze or Derrida and possibly try to think about you know how what what each word means or how, how to pin down what he's saying. You just can't do that. You can't you can't read it, read it like that. You just have to read the whole thing. And play it by ear, I guess is what I would say, um, <clears throat> and refer to also to uh, secondary sources on uh, Deleuze and Guattari, and there you can get at least some kind of idea. Because the point in post in post structuralist thought is to not really have <laughs> some kind of, you know argument after argument after after argument, or having distinct meaning or distinct points or distinct arguments or distinct any, or or distinct ontology, or distinct, distinct anything. So, um, first of all, the it's called introduction rhizome. It's basically contrasting the rhizomatic thought with the regular thought of most of philosophy and other and uh, other disciplines. And first of all, this is not just philosophy. This this ranges for all disciplines: um, cultural thought, anthropology, so so so, so it's, uh, sociology, politics. Social philosophy, um, it goes literally everywhere. This can, this can be applied and thought about with respect to every kind of discipline, 
and every kind of types of thought and everything really. So this is this is not just philosophy; it's everything. But it's a philosophy almost. Um, I don't know. I I I, I don't want to say something that I will re regret. So there's a root book and there's a fascicle book. Um, but for now, I'll just, I'll just I'll just talk about the the root book. But the the root the root the root and the and the and the fat the the uh, the uh, fascicular thing they have similar things and. And if you, in a future video, I'd like to to uh, discuss the difference between the root book and the fascicle book. But for the, for now, I'll just go do do the do the, do the difference between the the root book and the rhizome. So most of philosophy and most of thought is is organized to where we have a originating central point. You know, a, a beginning that branches off. This is a tree, basically branches off and keeps breaking off in has a beginning and an end and, and, and is very structuralized, organized, has meanings that are distinct and established always. Um, you know, um, that's the way most of philosophy is. It has a beginning, it has a, a foundational or, or organizational point, and moves, up, moves upward and this breaks off, you know, indefinitely into many different ways, just br more breaking off points that's it's very definite, very stru very structural, so that's the way most things are done, that's why they have it in the in the introduction body and conclusion format for last, because it's not like that at all. Um, so a rhizome I couldn't possibly draw, but it's kind of um, following thought, following like a, a, bo a, a botanical phenomena in nature, like a, like a ginger root, a rhizome, it doesn't go like, it doesn't go upward and downward, it has a beginning and an end. It goes vertically, and any one point within the, within the rhizomatic root can connect to any other, to, to any other point. Um, so, it's not st structural, the rhizome has no beginning and no end, just the middle, or just all middle, or milieu, and, um, Basically, the the way to understand rhizome is to is to is to contrast it with this to us, where um, this has a origin, and there's stru there's stru structural breaking off points, um, where the rhizome, any one point, I guess the way I would kind of do this would be to kind of it's really difficult because the ginger root is not that easy to draw, but we have kind of like. Um, But any other point can be can connect to any other point, and it's just there's no structural kind of thing with it. And if if and if a point if if a if a if a bulb or end a bulb or tuber is, is broken or destroyed, it reforms and can can connect to anything to, to, to anything else at all. But I guess the best way to kind of think of this would be to look at this 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 illustration at the very beginning of the book. Um, this little um, musical thing that you you, see, you can see how that really has no 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 uh, structure. How there's no actual notes or structural things, but any one point connects to any other point, and that's just the way it is. That's the best way to kind of explain that. Now, I'm doing this because I want to get input. I want to get I want to get input from you as to to help me and to help possibly to to help anybody else also. Um, because if you have things that, that you think should be added to the way I'm kind of explaining these, please, please comment because I'd love to d discuss this with you. Um, so this book by Deleuze and Guattari is rhizomatic in that any one point can connect to any other point, any aspect or context can be, can, can be connected to any other, to any other context. And uh, like let, let's say a topic in 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 political philosophy or political science can can connect to something in you know epistemological philosophy or even um, and, and even in um, and, and uh, anthropology. Thus, we have the, the concept of multi multiplicity and assemblage. Um, but first, let, let's go. Let's 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 discuss the concept body without organs. I just have B. B, B W O here because that's that's the way it's normally, I guess, written, 
Um, it's a body without or without organs. Um, and that's a difficult concept, but the whole thing is it's, it's a body and it's a organism, if you, if you will, a body but it has no distinct content or distinct meaning or distinct or, or, or distinct organizational organizational center and isn't, I guess, completely, completely stratified and completely, you know, organized via one certain concept. Um, that's, it's not that easy to, un to understand, but it's a body, it's a thing, it's a organism, it's a thing, a body, it, then this is, all these things are very conceptual, and it's very almost abstract to kind of think about all these things, but it relates practically and normatively to various different things, to various different, different, um, uh, disciplines. You know, like I said, anthropology, so sociology, and philosophy, and science, and everything else. So, um, the body without w without organs is the same as the plane of c c consistency. So, the plane of consistency is basically um, understood as the grid or map of all the multiplicities. So, that's, I guess, we can connect... If you will, we can connect these two, th these three things together. Um, now we can also connect multi multiplicity to the assemblage, which I will explain in a minute. Um, so, the body without the body without organs, well, we have on a conceptual organism of the world, if if you will, um, the grid of map of all of all of really everything, but it's without organs. Not actual like bodily, you know, organs like a like a lung, but it's body without organs in that there's no distinct, there's no, there's no um, actual um, established, stratified, organized content, um, and it has a lot to do with movement, which I will also explain. Um, so that's what this the, these things are, a multiplicity being. Um, a multiplicity of assemblages. So what is a assemblage? An, an assemblage is a grouping of various things within, it, within the same context. Um, so we have, you know, it's like we can, we can kind of group together, you know, um, things in, in psychology and sociology and philosophy and science. You know, we can group many different things and many, many different disciplines into a certain assemblage. So we can have on 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 infinity of possible different assemblages, but the multiplicity is a multiplicity of of assemblages. Um, so basically, um, uh, an assemblage is just certain things gathered into one's context or, or aspect. Um, so then the concept of a lovely line of flight. Don't think of this line of flight as a line in like mathematics or something like this. Don't think of it as like as that. It doesn't have definite like a definite line. It's not it's not a definite line line like that. It's an unbounded thing. It's an unbounded, um, it's, you can't really do it like this because you can think of it as this, but it's not, it's not bounded. It's not, it's not, it's nothing like these. It's not, it's, n it's nothing like the concept, of, the concept of a line in mathematics. Um, it's a line of flight. Why is it a line of flight? Because it's all about movement here. And that's how movement and lines of flight relate to this. Um, I have a lot of lines because this is all very connected and very, very, um, very just all together. Um, so a line of flight is mostly um, something that is able to move. And then this relates to um, the nomad or 
or no or nomad nomadology or or no, no, nomadicism. This is the whole thing that it's resistance to any kind of established, um, concrete and distinct meaning that is that 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 remains established. So, a line of flight conceptually is almost can be thought of as a as a deterritorialization, de um, in that it's. Um, the definition of hand on my other paper. Oh, um, it's basically falling and leaking and moving. The freedom of concepts to move into different possible, you know, um, the lines of flight. It's kind of described as the freedom to move. This kind of I kind of uh, relate this to Derrida in that. <sighs> We have difference with uh, with um, Derrida, and with Derrida, we have difference between concepts in that um, concepts you know turn inside out, and we and we have them that's kind of marginalized, and then you know come backward and sort of oscillate, if you will. And there's no like kind of between dualism and, and monism and the philosophy of mind, or uh, or um, metaphysics, you know. Having a point of of being a dualist staunchly or being a monist staunchly, um, that's logocentrism in that you know that's it's centered centered philosophy on one certain thing. Deconstru so the deconstruction of Derrida aims to marginalize that, um, to to expose a trace there to show how it's all how it's all connected and how we can just kind of have this difference between concepts and never have any establishing of meaning. Um, so. That's similar to what this is, nomadology in that, and line to flight, and the freedom to move within concepts, the the freedom to, of flowing and leaking, um, between things where there's no establishment of any kind of concrete, um, or cont or, or establishment really, um, that stays there. Um, so nomadology, or or nomadicism is related to movement, in that. This is the resistance to any kind of establishment of meaning that stays there. It's resistance to that. Um, and force is also related to, this is also related to desire and the war machine. Um, the, the war machine is pretty much... Um, um, to the same thing. It's resisting um, any kind of established thing um, and um, resisting some any kind of one thing that stays the way it is. Um, desire. This is the way that that things happen. The way that the way that things move. This this this, this relates to force uh, because desire is the way in which the world moves. The way things move is because of desire, really. Um, people wanting a certain thing is the reason that they that they that, that they move. You know, uh, the reason that they do what they do. So then I have the difference between logos and nomos. Logos is related to the is is, is related to meaning um, in a way, and this is related to the establishment of that of such. Nomos is the total opposite, in that we have this, you know, movement, lines of flight, and force, you know, uh, between all this stuff. Um, so, over friendly to deterritorialization, deterritorialization and re-territorialization. Re re de 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 deterritorialization is mostly the breakdown of establishment, um, becoming something other than other than it is. Um, concepts that were established retract and become something else. That's what, th that's what this is. Re-territorialization is mostly the re-establishment. So we kind of, in the same way that Derrida has the difference between concepts, di the, uh, we have difference and deferral with uh, Derrida, where, con where concepts marginalize and we, we 
we de we deconstruct things and we expose traces. And we just we have constant constant difference and in deferral never coming to a certain meaning. We have de we have de deterritorialization and reterritorialization in that we we establish something and then re and then and then undo it. This is a coming undone, if you will. Um, that's actually from Deleuze. I think it, that's what's in Anti Oedipus. Um, so that's what that is. Um, what is a plateau? A plateau is described as the milieu or the middle. We have a thousand plateaus because it's all middle. It's all the middle. There's no origin, there's no end to any of this. It's all one somewhat organized, but not concretely organized. He says that there's body without organs. There's some, there's no real concrete meaning or content within this body or organism, but there is in a way some kind of stratification, but very, but very little just in these, in these ways. Just strat, just um, stratification in the way of milieu. So what is becoming that is constant production, constant, constant, um, have that on my sheet? Nope. Um, but the, that, that pretty much, becoming is the constant, constant production and constant re, renewing and, and basically be, be, be it's, uh, be, becoming of things. And it, there, this is constantly in progress because things, in this whole system, things are constantly, constantly becoming anew through this and this and this. And this, everything is becoming anew, and that's what that's what becoming is. Um, <laughs> this is very difficult to understand. Okay, this is not something that I can possibly even do in an hour if I even took the, took the time for that. I'm basically in 22 minutes right now, um, but I couldn't possibly do this in one hour. Okay, I couldn't possibly explain the first chapter of this so this is somewhat of a guide if you will to this and I plan on doing hopefully a video for each of the each of the other plateaus um, so hopefully this is a bit of a, a bit of a guide for you <coughs> um, I otherwise I would highly recommend s secondary sources on the, on these on these two also I recommend there's a youtuber or he, he's a, he's a he's a philosopher on YouTube, his name is John David Ebert. Uh, he privatizes a lot, he privatizes a lot a lot of his videos, which kind of makes me kind of mad because I want to watch those watch those videos. But he privatizes a lot of his stuff, and I don't know why. But some if he, if you can look up John John David Ebert and find videos of him on Deleuze or Deleuze and Guattari, and see them publicized, then watch those. Also, um, uh, Brian Masumi. Eugene Howard and uh, I forget who else. Um, there are there are, there are many others. Just look for sec look for sec secondary sources. So um, I'm gonna possibly I'm gonna probably gonna I'm pro I'm definitely gonna do a lot a lot more a lot more videos on this book and um, hopefully the anti Oedipus and the difference and repetition and I'll do videos as to how this and as to how this relates to culture. Into 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 anthropology and so, so, sociology, how this how this relates to people before him, like Socher, Claude Levi Strauss, um, and uh, Roland Bart, and uh, Walter Benjamin, and people like that. The the structuralists before him, also Jacques 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 Lacan, and also I'll do a video as to how all this relates to psychoanalysis and. I just have a lot of videos that I plan on doing about these about these two. So, um, thank you. If you have any questions about anything, please please comment. I'd love to um, discuss with you. Um, also, if you if you, if you think I've left love, I've left left something out in a little brief little um, um, intro to these concepts, also comment below. I want I want I want I want good criticism. So, um, and uh, thank you.